Automatic Addison. When you're working with robots, you need a way for all of the different parts of the robot to communicate with each other. That's where DDS comes into play. DDS stands for Data Distribution Service. You can think of it like a super advanced messaging system for robots and computers. Think of it like this. Imagine you have a bunch of robots in a factory and they all need to work together to build cars. Each robot has a specific job, like welding doors or painting bumpers. To do their jobs, they need to be able to send messages to each other like, I finished welding this door or I need more paint over here. DDS is what makes this communication possible. It is a set of rules that all the robots agree to follow so they can send messages quickly and reliably. It is kind of like a big chat room where robots can post and read messages. But instead of just being for fun, these messages contain important information that the robots need to do their jobs. ROS2 uses DDS under the hood to help all the different parts of a robot to communicate. You could think of DDS as the glue that holds everything together in a ROS2 system. Now here's where something called the ROS domain ID comes in. Remember that, ROS domain ID. In a DDS system, you can have multiple chat rooms, each with its own ID number. These chat rooms are called domains in DDS language. The ROS domain ID is just a number that tells ROS which domain to use. By default, ROS uses zero for the ROS domain ID. It is fine if we keep the default since we are working in simulation. However, in real world projects, you might have a facility with multiple robots, think 50, 100 robots, all running ROS2. If all these robots use the default settings, they'll all be talking in the same chat room, all with domain ID zero. Uh, well, that might be fine if you want all your robots to communicate with each other, but let's say you have two different teams of robots in your factory, and you don't want them to get confused by hearing each other's messages. You could put one team in domain one and the other team using ROS domain two. They're all still using DDS to communicate, but the two teams can't hear each other because they're in different domains. The easiest way to choose a ROS domain ID is to pick a number between 0 and 101, or between 215 and 232. These numbers are less likely to conflict with other programs that might be using DDS. In my tutorials, we'll be sticking with the default domain ID of 0. This means all our robots will be able to communicate with each other. But if you ever need to work with multiple groups of robots that shouldn't be talking to each other, remember that you can use different ROS domain IDs. If you did want to change the ROS domain ID, you can do it by typing this command. Export ROS domain ID and then the equal sign and then whatever ROS domain ID you want, zero all the way up through 101 and then 215 through 232. So you're gonna replace the your chosen number with the domain ID that you want to use. For example, if you want to use a ROS domain ID of 42, you would add in the terminal window 42 right after the export ROS domain ID prefix there. Remember, if you have multiple robots on the same Wi-Fi network and you want them to be able to talk to each other, they should all have the same ROS domain ID. But if groups of robots that shouldn't be communicating, give each group its own specific ROS domain ID. Now let's go over to the terminal and let's run an example. Okay, let's begin by opening a terminal window. I'm going to launch the Terminator application, T-E-R-M-I-N-A-T-O-R. -E We're going to open up this terminal window. We're gonna right click and click split horizontally. In the top, I'm gonna to do ROS2 run demo nodes. CPP talker. Oop, let's go to ROS2. Run demo nodes, CPP talker. Let's get it going. Let's expand the window out a bit so we can see everything here. So remember, the talker program publishes messages to the ROS2 system, the hello world message. Now, in the bottom window, we're going to open up the listener program and we do that by typing ROS2 
run demo nodes pi and then listener and then enter okay so now we can confirm that the publisher the talker node up top is publishing hello world messages and down below the listener the subscriber is listening to those messages and you can see both of those prog programs are talking to each other all right so we got that there now let's close both programs by pressing Control c in both terminal windows let's press clear press clear to clear everything out there now we're going to have some fun with the ROS domain ID. So in the top terminal, we are going to change the ROS domain ID from its current default of zero to eight. And we do that by typing export ROS domain ID equals eight. Okay, so now in the top terminal, we are using the ROS domain ID of eight. And in the same terminal window, let's launch the talker node. So let's do ROS2, run, demo nodes, CPP, and then talker, enter. Okay, so now we're running our talker node. And up here in this terminal window, this bash session, we are using a ROS domain ID of eight. And now let's run our listener. I'm just gonna press the up arrow button and by the way, the up arrow button enables you to retrieve the most recent commands that you typed in to the terminal window. So it's a little quick way to get to whatever you just typed. So I press the up arrow button twice and I'm going to run the listener. And what, we should, what should we expect here? So because up here up top, we're using a ROS domain ID of eight and down below, we're using a ROS domain ID of zero, the default. We should get nothing when we run the listener. There should be absolutely nothing coming out of the listener. Why? Because they're both on different ROS domain IDs. So they're both speaking in different ROS2 uh, uh, systems, uh, ROS2 domains. So the listener should not hear any messages coming from our publisher. So let's type the enter here. And you can see, in fact, we have nothing coming out. That's very different from what we had before when they were both using a ROS domain ID of zero. The publisher was talking to the subscriber. The talker was talking to the listener. So we can confirm that our ROS domain ID of eight was successfully set up top because we've got absolutely nothing coming out from the listener, which is in ROS domain ID of zero. All right, so now let's press Control C in both terminal windows to shut these nodes off. Let's do clear, so we have nice, clean terminal windows. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to, again, let's, we have our ROS domain ID of eight up top. All right, and now let's run the talker again. I'm gonna press the up arrow. Okay, our talker is running. And we're going to do something a bit different now. So in the bottom, you can see when I type this, echo, space, dollar sign, ROS, capital R-O-S, underscore domain, underscore ID. You can see there's absolutely nothing there uh, when I actually show the value of ROS domain ID. Now I'm going to change it to eight so that the subscriber, the listener, matches the same ROS domain ID as our talker above. And to do that, we are going to type export ROS domain underscore ID equals eight, enter. And now when I echo that variable to show its value, you do the echo and then the dollar sign and then the variable name, ROS domain ID, you can see eight right here, all right? So now let's run the listener again, and we should expect the listener to be listening to messages from the talker above because they both have the same ROS domain ID now, which is eight. And we can see that is confirmed.
Now the listener is listening to the talker, and they're both on the raw same Ross domain ID. Pretty cool, huh? So that's how you set it up. So you can have multiple robots, all right, in the same environment, on the same Wi-Fi network. If you want them to all communicate with each other, make sure they are all using the same Ross domain ID. If you don't want them to communicate or you want uh, the, the robots to be individual and each one communicate just among itself, you would set unique Ross domain IDs for each and every robot so that they're all speaking on different channels, unique channels. And there you have it, the Ross domain ID. Very fundamental concept when you're programming robots with Ross, especially multi-robot environments. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next tutorial.